What sets apart a successful salesperson from the rest? Have you ever pondered this question? It's not just about strategies, techniques, or even charisma. It's something more fundamental, more intrinsic. It's about mindset. Yes, you heard it right. The mindset of a successful salesperson is what truly sets them apart. But what is this mindset we're talking about? Is it a unique thought pattern or a set of beliefs? Well, it's a bit of both. It's an attitude, a way of thinking and a perspective that shapes how they approach their sales career. It's the lens through which they view their interactions with prospects, their sales goals, their successes and their failures. A successful salesperson doesn't just see a prospect as a potential sale. They see them as a unique individual with specific needs and desires. They don't just aim to sell a product or service, they aim to provide a solution and add value. They understand that their success is tied not to the number of sales they make, but to the relationships they build and the value they provide. They also view their sales goals not just as targets to hit, but as milestones on their journey of growth and development. They take pride in their achievements and grow from their setbacks. They understand that every no brings them one step closer to a yes, and that every setback is an opportunity for a comeback. The mindset of a successful salesperson is also characterized by resilience and determination. They understand that sales is a tough game, filled with rejection and disappointment, but they don't let this deter them. Instead, they embrace the challenges, knowing that every hardship is an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to become better at what they do. They also possess an unwavering belief in their abilities and their potential. They know they have what it takes to succeed, and they won't let anyone or anything convince them otherwise. They believe in themselves, and this belief fuels their drive, their persistence, and their determination to succeed. Actually, one of the most important factors in a salesperson's success is their mindset. It's what guides their actions, shapes their experiences, and ultimately determines their results. So, if you want to excel in sales, start by cultivating the right mindset because, as the saying goes, your mindset is your greatest asset. Discovering how our thoughts affect our sales numbers is a fascinating topic, so let us explore it. Our brains are constantly at work processing, deleting, distorting and generalizing information. It's a busy junction where thoughts and perceptions collide and intertwine, creating our reality. First impressions matter, especially in sales. Within the first four seconds on the phone or the blink of an eye in person, the prospect has compartmentalized you. And whether we admit it or not, we've judged them too. It's a rapid fire exchange of conscious and unconscious thoughts that can steer the course of the conversation. Our minds are like vehicles that we drive in the sales cycle. The windshield of this vehicle is vast, allowing us to focus on the future. The mirrors Though smaller, let us glance at the past to learn from our mistakes. But how do we keep this vehicle in top shape? How do we ensure that it's not just running but winning the race? We need to tune our minds, much like we would a vehicle. Our brains are both transmitters and receivers, constantly sending out and picking up signals. We need to make sure that these signals are positive and that they're focused on solutions rather than problems. Guilt and remorse are two emotions that can heavily impact our sales performance. While guilt can be empowering, reminding us of our responsibility, remorse can be defeating. It's a deeper feeling of regret that acknowledges the harm done and the impact it has had. But remember, in the world of sales, there's no room for remorse. Instead, let guilt be your compass, guiding you to learn from your mistakes and strive to do better. So take a pause and look around. How many opportunities are you missing because you're not looking for them? Remember, what you focus on expands. If we've been conditioned to focus on our problems, it's time we recondition our minds to focus on solutions and opportunities. Your mind is the vehicle you drive in the sales cycle. So, how does your vehicle look? Are you living with the problem or the solution? This matters more than you think. In the world of sales, your mindset can make or break your success. It's easy to get caught up in problems and dwell on missed targets or lost deals. But the most successful salespeople don't live with the problem. They live with the solution. 
Imagine your mind as a room. In one corner, there's a pile of problems, failure to meet objectives, deals that did not go through, and dissatisfied customers. On the opposite side, you can see a stack of answers. Takeaways, fresh approaches, and blueprints for development. Which pile are you going to focus on? Living with the problem means constantly revisiting those missed targets and lost deals. It means feeling guilty and remorseful. But guilt and remorse aren't the same thing, and understanding the difference can significantly impact your sales performance. Guilt is the feeling you get when you've done something wrong. It's a sense of responsibility, a nagging feeling that sticks with you. It's that voice in your head that says, I should have done better. But guilt can be empowering. It can motivate you to learn from your mistakes and strive to do better next time. Remorse, however, is a deeper emotion. It's more than just feeling guilty. It's a profound sense of regret and sadness about the impact of your actions. Remorse doesn't empower you. It drags you down. It keeps you stuck in the problem, unable to move forward. So how do you live with the solution? You take that guilt, that feeling of, I should have done better, and you use it. You learn from it. You make a plan to improve to avoid making the same mistakes in the future. You focus on the pile of solutions, not the pile of problems. Living in the solution means choosing to focus on possibilities rather than limitations. It means seeing each problem as an opportunity to learn and grow, to become a better salesperson. Don't let the past drag you down or define who you are. Live in the solution. What you focus on expands. Imagine focus as a magnifying glass, intensifying the light of your attention on a particular subject. The more you concentrate, the more potent the beam becomes, leading to a brighter, more vivid picture. This is the essence of focus in sales, the ability to illuminate opportunities that might otherwise remain hidden in the shadows of indifference. It's easy to get lost in the labyrinth of challenges that sales professionals face daily. The constant pressure to meet targets, the unending stream of rejections, and the ceaseless need to stay motivated. But here's the secret. Focus not on the hurdles, but on the potential triumphs that lie beyond them. Focusing on positive aspects can open a gateway to a plethora of opportunities. It's about seeing the glass half full, not half empty. It's about viewing each no as a step closer to a yes each rejection as a lesson learned, and each failure as a catalyst for improvement. This positive focus can transform your sales journey from a gruelling marathon into an exhilarating sprint. Think about this. If you're constantly focusing on the problems, the difficulties and the obstacles, you're giving them more power over you. They become larger, more daunting and more insurmountable. But when you shift your focus to the solutions, the possibilities and the opportunities, you empower yourself. You become the driver, not the passenger, on your sales journey. But remember, focus isn't about blind optimism. It's about realistic positivity. It's about acknowledging the challenges, but not allowing them to consume your attention. It's about concentrating on the potential successes that lie within every interaction, every phone call and every meeting. Let us then magnify our vision until it becomes a laser beam, piercing through noise and obstacles to illuminate our way forward. Remember, we miss all the opportunities we aren't looking for. Now, negative emotions disappear at the rate they're confronted. How often do you confront yours? In the world of sales, it's not uncommon to encounter negative emotions. Fear of rejection, anxiety about meeting targets, self-doubt, and the constant pressure to perform can take a toll on even the most seasoned sales professionals. But here's the key. These emotions don't have to control you. They don't have to shape your sales journey or define your success. Confronting these emotions and acknowledging their existence is the first step in overcoming them. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion. Each layer represents a fear, a doubt or a worry. And as you peel back each layer, you expose the core, the root of the emotion. And it's at this core where transformation begins. Overcoming fears can lead to personal growth. Take, for instance, the fear of rejection, a common phobia in sales. Each no you hear is an opportunity to learn, to grow and to adapt. It's an invitation to refine your approach, to hone your skills and to become better. So confront this fear. Welcome the no's with open arms. Use them as stepping stones to your next yes.
Improved sales performance is a byproduct of this personal growth. As you confront and overcome your fears, you become more confident and resilient. A single rejection or a challenging day at work won't easily sway you. You understand that success in sales is a marathon, not a sprint, and with each fear you overcome, you're one step closer to the finish line. Remember, the mind is a powerful tool in sales. It can either be your greatest ally or your biggest obstacle. If you let it, negative emotions can consume your thoughts, cloud your judgment and hinder your performance. But if you choose to confront these emotions and face them head on, you take control. You steer your mind towards positivity, towards growth and towards success. So what is success? By definition, it's the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. Succession means the king is dead, long live the king. Are you the king of your kingdom? In the grand scheme of things, success isn't some far off pinnacle to be reached. It's not a distant mountain peak waiting for you to conquer it. No, successes are the little steps you take on the path you're on. It's the decisions you're making about the character you're becoming. So are you claiming your success now? Are you embracing the journey of becoming the person you aspire to be? Or are you waiting for some future moment to finally say, I made it? Understand this, the character you want to be, the successful salesperson you envision, doesn't exist in the future. That character, that person exists right now. It's you, it's you when you make that call, when you close that deal, and when you learn from a mistake. Claiming success now is about adopting the mindset of a winner, even when you're still in the process of winning. It's about embodying the qualities of the successful person you aspire to be, rather than waiting for some future validation. But how do you do that? How do you claim your success now? You start by believing in yourself. You affirm your abilities, your strengths and your potential. You focus on your achievements, no matter how small, and allow them to fuel your confidence. You also embrace a growth mindset. You view challenges as opportunities for learning and growth, rather than obstacles to be feared. You understand that mistakes and failures are part of the journey, and you treat them as stepping stones to success, rather than stumbling blocks. And you stay committed to your goals. You keep pushing forward, keep striving and keep growing, even when the journey gets tough. You don't let setbacks or obstacles deter you from your path. Instead, you use them as motivation to work harder and achieve more. Claiming success now is about embodying the spirit of a winner, even in the midst of the battle. It's about adopting the mindset of a champion, even when you're still fighting for the championship. Like Muhammad Ali, claim you're the greatest even before you've proven it. The past is a lesson, not an ego boost or an excuse for poor performance. How are you using your past? A series of experiences mark our journey through life, and it is the lessons we learn from these experiences that mold who we are. In sales, like in life, the past is a treasure trove of valuable lessons. It's a chronicle of our victories and defeats, our triumphs and our failures. But remember, it's not a place to dwell, it's a place to learn. Consider the successful salesperson. They don't use their past to inflate their egos, but to inform their present. They examine their past deals, both those that were successful and those that weren't. They dissect their interactions their negotiations and their strategies. What worked? What didn't? What could they have done differently? They extract the lessons and apply them to their current endeavors. Similarly, they don't use their past as an excuse for poor performance. If they've had a rough patch, they don't let it define them. They don't allow it to become a crutch or an easy way out. They acknowledge it, they learn from it, and then they move on. They understand that failure isn't a reflection of their worth but an opportunity for growth. The past also serves as a reminder of the pitfalls to avoid. A successful salesperson takes note of the mistakes they've made and ensures they don't repeat them. They're aware that making the same mistakes over and over is not just counterproductive. It's a sign of stagnation. They're committed to progress and to progress one must learn and evolve. Importantly, they also use their past to cultivate empathy. They remember the challenges they've overcome and the obstacles they've encountered. 
they realize that their clients too have their own set of challenges. This understanding enables them to connect on a deeper level and offer solutions that are truly beneficial. So take a leaf out of the successful salesperson's book. Look back at your past, not with regret or arrogance, but with a learner's curiosity. Extract the lessons, apply them and move forward. So let's adopt the mindset of a successful salesperson. A successful salesperson understands the power of their mind, both as a transmitter and receiver. They know that in the briefest moments, judgments are made and compartments are created. This understanding allows them to communicate effectively, sharing both conscious and unconscious thoughts with their clients. They live with the solution, not the problem. They understand that guilt can be empowering while remorse is defeating. They focus on positive outcomes and opportunities, knowing what they focus on expands. They confront negative emotions head on, allowing them to dissipate. They claim success now, not waiting for some future moment to define them. They learn from the past, using it as a lesson, not an ego boost or an excuse for poor performance. Now is the perfect time to do the exercise in the accompanying Centrelane Sales Workbook. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next lesson.